Hello, and welcome back to TTHL. Today, we have a chilling tale from the morning of October 6, 1949, which shook East Camden, New Jersey to its core. The unsettling story of Howard Unruh, a 28-year-old World War II veteran who carried out a rampage that claimed the lives of 13 people and injured three others. A horrifying incident that became known as his walk of death. Howard Unruh was born on January 21, 1921. He grew up in East Camden, New Jersey with his younger brother James and his mother Rita. Howard attended Kramer Junior High School and later graduated from Woodrow Wilson High School in January of 1939. In his yearbook, he was described as shy with aspirations of working for the government. When he was 21, Unruh enlisted in the United States Army and saw active duty between October 1944 and July of 1945. During his service, he earned several medals, including the European Theater of Operations Medal, the Victory Medal, and the Good Conduct Medal. Despite never advancing beyond the position of private first class, his superiors commended his exemplary adherence to orders. During combat, however, he maintained precise records of each German he had killed. These notes included the date, time, and location of each event, and when possible, the disturbingly detailed description of the deceased bodies. After the war, Unruh was honorably discharged, with no mention of mental illness in his military records, and settled back into the three-bedroom apartment in the tranquil suburban area of East Camden with his now 60-year-old mother, offering a stark contrast to the turmoil he had experienced during the war. His brother, however, noticed that when he returned, he was moody, nervous, and detached and was never the same. Now that he was back at home, Unruh set up well-defined daily routines. He diligently tended to his garden and even secured temporary employment at the local machine shop. However, he left that job and enrolled at Temple University School of Pharmacy in Philadelphia, though he ultimately withdrew after three months citing health concerns. Unfortunately, his horrific wartime experiences seemed to haunt him still. Unruh spent extensive hours within the confines of his home. He proudly displayed his war medals and devoted time to reading his Bible. Additionally, he honed his marksmanship skills, utilizing a makeshift basement shooting range he had set up for practice. Despite his calm exterior, turmoil brewed within him. Struggling to reintegrate into a changed world, his affinity for precision and mathematics was accompanied by a sense of loneliness. Isolated and disconnected, Unruh's perception of the world shifted as he became convinced it was conspiring against him. His growing paranoia concerning the conversations taking place about him intensified his sense of persecution, leading him to believe that everyone was deliberately ridiculing him. Over time, his relationships with several of his neighbors continued to deteriorate. He became increasingly distressed by what he perceived as derogatory remarks made about his character. On Monday evening, September 5th, Unruh left his apartment to meet a man he recently had been involved in a relationship with at the Family Theater located in downtown Philadelphia, a well-known location for gay men to meet. Unfortunately, traffic delays caused him to arrive at the theater late, and his date had already left. He sat through the movies alone and returned home at around 3 a.m., it was then that he realized his recently constructed fence, an attempt to resolve an ongoing dispute with the Coens, had been taken down. Unruh had many arguments, with neighbor Maurice Cohen in particular, regarding the use of Cohen's backyard as a shortcut to the main road. Rose Cohen had also lodged complaints about the constant loud volume of Unruh's bedroom radio late into the night, which intensified tensions. The morning of September 6, 1949, marked a turning point. 
A few minutes prior, Unruh and his mother had faced a dire situation when he had left the breakfast table abruptly and returned with a wrench threatening his mother. After numerous attempts to calm her son down, she quickly left the apartment and went directly to see her friend, who lived in the neighboring block. There, she shared her concerns with her friend's husband, but it was too late. Shortly after that, the gunfire began. After breakfast around 9 a.m., 28-year-old veteran Howard Unruh loaded one clip of bullets into his Luger pistol, a memento from his wartime service, along with two clips and 33 loose cartridges. He also grabbed a tear gas pen and six shells and a sharp six-inch knife. He then set out on a chilling rampage on the 3200 block of River Road in East Camden, New Jersey that would later become infamously known as his Walk of Death. He embarked on a calculated spree of violence. His primary victims were neighbors he believed had spoken ill of him. Pharmacist Maurice Cohen and his wife Rose, Barbara Clark Hoover, Taylor Thomas Zagrino, and shoemaker John Pillarchik. Unruh walked calmly and deliberately up River Road, which consisted at the time of only five buildings on one side and three one-story stores on the other. He entered John Pillarchek's shoe repair store and promptly shot him, ending the 27-year-old's life. Without hesitation, Unruh left the shop. He then turned and continued walking up the street to 3210 River Road to a little country barber shop where Clark Hoover was cutting a little boy's hair. Andrew shot the six-year-old Oris Smith in the chest before turning the gun on Hoover. He shot Hoover in the chest once and then fatally shot him in the head. Tragically, the little boy's mother sat in a chair against the wall and watched in horror. While approaching Cohen's pharmacy next, Unruh shot and fatally wounded James Hutton, a 45-year-old insurance agent who merely was curious about the commotion. In a later statement to police, Unruh said that he had killed Hutton because he was in a hurry and that he just didn't get out of his way fast enough. After hearing the shots, Cohen went outside to investigate, but when he saw Unruh walking towards him, he ran upstairs into his apartment to warn his 38-year-old wife Rose, their 12-year-old son, and his 36-year-old mother Minnie. Rose grabbed her son and shoved him into one closet while she hid in another. Unruh followed them into their apartment and found Rose. He shot her through the closet door, killing her instantly. He then shot Minnie, who was in another room trying to call the police. He chased Cohen onto the roof and shot him in the back as he tried to escape, causing him to fall onto the road below. Fortunately, Cohen's son managed to escape without being noticed. Unruh then walked back out into the street and stood in the middle of River Road. He shot at an approaching car, killing the driver. Afterward, he calmly walked into the tailor shop at 3214 River Road, belonging to Thomas Zagrino. Although Zagrino was absent at the moment, his wife of one month, Helga, was there, and Unruh tragically took her life. Notably, Zagrino was the only intended target who managed to survive the tragic events of that day. Unruh did not stop there. He continued shooting at a car waiting at an intersection, killing two adult occupants on the scene. The other occupant, a nine-year-old boy, died later in the hospital. He then meticulously shot through an apartment window at 3208 River Road, killing a child who was playing close to the curtains. A local bar owner, after hearing screams, ran out and tried to shoot Unruh with his 38 caliber pistol, hitting him in the leg, a fact that would only be discovered later. Unruh then shot at a mother and her son, who were hanging out blankets to dry, fortunately injuring both but not fatally. Unruh's rampage through the neighborhood lasted approximately 20 minutes and was swift and merciless. He moved with a precision that mirrored his mathematical mind, each of his movements calculated, each life extinguished with chilling efficiency. The tranquil streets were transformed into a nightmare, and the community that once felt so safe was now gripped by terror. Suddenly, upon hearing the approaching police sirens, Unruh quickly retreated into his apartment. Soon he found himself surrounded by law enforcement officers. 
As tensions escalated, the police discharged their pistols and shotguns into the apartment. In addition, the police threw two tear gas bombs into the flat, and the second one of them began filling it with gas. Two armed officers, patrolman Charles Hance and Captain Everett Jocelyn, went to the bottom of the stairs and shouted, Come down with your hands up. Unruh responded, I give up, don't shoot. He came out of the room, stumbled down the stairs, and fell at the officer's feet. At that point, Sergeant Earl Wright handcuffed him. When detectives entered the apartment, they found an arsenal of weapons, which included guns, knives, equipment for making bullets, and over 700 rounds of ammunition. They also discovered several marksmanship medals in a drawer and the target range in the basement. On the table, there was a Bible that was open to Matthew chapter 24, a chapter concerning future events. Unruh was interrogated immediately after the incident by detectives and Camden County prosecutor for approximately two hours. I shot them in the chest first, he recounted, providing meticulous detail. Then I aimed for the head. His accuracy was chillingly effective, and he had a purpose behind it. It wasn't until Unruh stood up that the blood on his pant leg led investigators to find that he had been shot in his left thigh. He was subsequently taken to Cooper Hospital for treatment. After his release, charges were filed for 13 counts of willful and malicious slayings with malice aforethought and three counts of atrocious assault and battery. The subsequent trial unfolded as a national spectacle, with the nation confronting the devastating aftermath of Unruh's actions. Experts delved into the intricacies of his psyche, striving to comprehend how an ostensibly ordinary man could perpetrate such a dreadful act. Surprisingly, there was no documented history of mental illness preceding these events. Psychologists conducted a comprehensive assessment, leading to a diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia. This determination established him as legally insane, thereby exempting him from criminal prosecution. Furthermore, Unruh exhibited an unexpected openness with psychologists about his homosexuality, an aspect of his identity that much of the community had already inferred. However, during the 1940s, this facet of his sexuality was not merely frowned upon. It was both illegal and frequently accompanied by severe social repercussions. These elements combined with Unruh's anxiety and social psychosis converged to exacerbate his condition. Notably, psychologists observed that Unruh had likely been grappling with a persecution complex for a minimum of two years, if not longer. He was sent to the New Jersey Hospital for the Insane, where he remained incarcerated for 60 years until his death on October 19, 2009, at the age of 88. Unruh's last public words made during an interview with psychologists were, I'd have killed a thousand if I had enough bullets. Unruh's walk of death stands as the deadliest mass shooting in New Jersey's history, an eerie reminder of the darkness that can inhibit seemingly ordinary individuals. His story highlights the significance of mental health awareness and emphasizes the severe consequences that unchecked trauma can inflict on an individual's life. As the years passed, Howard Unruh became a haunting figure in American history, a symbol of the darkness that can lurk within even the most unassuming individuals. If you found this video informative, please like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to stay updated on upcoming content as we continue to explore the crossroads of light and shadow for our next terrifying tale or haunted location. Until next time, thanks for watching.